Wasser. Yesterday, I decided to re-solder circuits in the transistor. The old one, you know. I thought, maybe it doesn't work. And that's why I don't hear anything from you on either the long wave or short wave band. Ah, oh, dear boy, your behavior. Maybe I raised you poorly. Sometimes I think I should have done more. But you should write me. I worry about you, baby. I think I don't know. Is it too difficult to call? Papa, how are you? I'm missing you ever so much. I promise to come home soon. <sighs> I wish you'd come home for vacation. wouldn't believe how smart and talented he's become. Every day he writes and calls and says, Papa, I miss you so much. I'd love to come home right now, but I can't. I'm very busy. Everyone needs me here. I cannot leave. They need me. And I say to him, good, study, work hard, do well, son. <sighs> it's tremendously good when everyone needs you, yeah? I'm proud, yeah? Baby, la 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 la. My good friend, I had to drop by. You. Never guess who's here! My baby! Huh? Who? Uh, uh, oh, well, of course. Let me just set my grand piano. I mean, no, no, a uh, table. We'll set the table and celebrate. No, another time. Excuse us, we're very busy. Oh, my goodness, what is that? Shoe away! Shoe! Barry! Don't you recognize him? Maybe he's come back to me. Whew. Let's go back to my place and <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> There's no time. There are so many things we need to discuss. So many things to catch up on. There. <sighs> Tell me, boy, what's been going on with you? Tell me everything. Happy Bibi's back. back. Look at you. He's what's taking so long? long? Oh, Chico and I made you some super cool plans. For vacation. Hey, hey! We were going to the talking here. At 8.30, we're going to do scary stories and so many more terrific things. Bibi, we'll, we'll have lunch. Half hour. Don't be late. Woo! Hey! Oh! Woo! We're swinging! Oh, incredible! <laughs> I've started it, now you try. Of course, when I get to this side, you gotta be careful, because they're real attractive to pet. Ah! The majestic eminence. <laughs> come on, come on, come on! <laughs> Come back here! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! Aw, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on! Heads up! No! <laughs> <laughs> Keep in touch, buddy. Yeah, we <laughs> 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 
Listen, you didn't manage to tell me anything that's happened to you. It's okay, though. I see that everything's just fine. You are my greatest guy. Only, please do write me about anything. Your daily schedule. I got you some fresh batteries. Don't forget to recharge them. And don't forget your old dead pin. Remember, you're always welcome at home. Uh, go now. Go now. After not receiving any communication, our friend Pin has become quite worried about BB. Setting off for outer space in search of his creation, Pin met some unexpected friends on the way. And this was only the beginning of a series of intergalactic mishaps. Hold on! Pin! 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 <coughs> Pin! Wake up! Something we can do? I'm sorry, Pin. We cannot return to home planet. The engine has failed. It would be far too dangerous. What a catastrophe! We've got to get some help! Send an SOS signal. Stat! Please let someone hear our signal. If someone doesn't come quickly, we are done for. Uh, I think we're pretty much doomed here. Emergency door can only be used from the inside. Hey, lady, you heard him. Open the door. Yeah, like, pretty please. Now you listen here. Ooh. I am not opening that door. If you don't open that door right now, you're in a world of trouble. Get down. <laughs> Your threats won't work, big ears. Now back up, or do I have to give you a big zap? <laughs> please, computer. I can hardly breathe. Oxygen. Really? Baby.
Pin? Pin! We're losing him. Isn't there a backup engine? Turn on the backup! I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm afraid I can't do that. Turn on the backup engine this instant! Huh? Chico! I think we're moving! Bring it closer! Steady! Okay, sure. How'd you do it? Search me. Go slower! I'm trying to! Keep going, buddy! <gasps> oh, that was a close one! What the? It's BB! Space, 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 uh, space, dummy. Baby saved us. He heard your SOS signal, so he came and saved us all. Baby, but why is he here? Where is he? He had a jet, but we took this picture while you were sleeping. Baby, just look at him. That's my boy, all right. That's him. He had to go back to uh, what do you call it? Corner Kappa Capricorn, something like that. Outer space business. But don't worry about it, Pin. He said he'd come back. Uh, Harvey, anyway. Bound for home. I'm flying through space, space. I'm flying through space, space. Space, 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 space. Fasten your seatbelts. Prepare for Earth landing. Buckle up, everybody. Fasten Woo! your seatbelts. Prepare for Earth landing. Yeah, we heard you, lady. Um, did we just land? You know, I'm not sure. I think we did. Huh. Well, there's only one way to find out. Hey, computer lady! Open the pod bay doors, will ya? I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hmm. 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 <laughs> it's a weed. It's as weedy as a weed can get. No, no, listen, my agrarian friend. You don't understand. I have to know exactly what it's called. Well, it hasn't got a name. A weed. Just a weed, that's all. Is that the scientific method, my good man? Let me explain, my naive friend. Everything in nature has a name. It's absolutely impossible for something not to. Without a name, how would we know what things are? <laughs> <gasps> Diameter 25 and 70 centimeters, height 350 centimeters. Incredible! Okay, now, to show its proportions... There. <laughs> Let's see here, taproot, fibrous root, mm, maybe it's this one. 40 centimeters? No, that's not right. It seems I've discovered a plant currently unknown to science. Darko! Hey, Darko! Should I go ahead and get rid of this weed for you? No, don't touch it! It is a species utterly unknown to science. It must be thoroughly examined. Well, you know best. Just thought I'd ask. Let me know if you change your mind. <gasps> Phenomenal! <clears throat> testing, testing. By the evening of the first day, the specimen has grown 40%. Not to mention it... it... it glows. Hey, Darko! Darko! Uh, uh, hey, I was on my way to see you. Uh, I thought I'd see if you'd reconsider the whole growing weeds thing. I can help you get rid of those thorns. Oh, yeah! Look at these sprouts I brought you. They're rose turnips. Cross-pollinated them myself, both beauty and substance. Uh, well, ain't that a stinger? What are you watering it with? What kind 
of fertilizer do you usually use, my good man? Uh, mostly compost, but superphosphate also works pretty good, too. Just a second. Let me write that down. But isn't it just weed? You know, I mean, uh, good-for-nothing weed? Wait, what do you mean, good-for-nothing? It glows at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, if it glows, then that's a different story now, isn't it? He's totally crazy, seeing glowing weeds and all. On the second night, the specimen not only emitted light waves, but unusual sound waves as well, reminiscent of music of the great Viennese composers. Utter nonsense. <laughs> Members of the Nymphalidae family were attracted to the light. They proceeded to gather in ring-like formations, moving around in rhythmic harmony <laughs> that appeared to look somewhat like dancing. Like dancing? What rubbish! Peak happiness was reached when the observed connection between music and light was in the middle of the radio spectrum. Though it looked and sounded interesting, it's just not possible. It can't possibly be happening. Completely impossible. That's it. It's just... <gasps> Darko! Darko! Yeah. I did it. I dug it up. That's good. You done really good. <laughs> it was unscientific. It was just impossible. Of course it wasn't scientific. Weeds are unscientific by nature. Let's plant you some hybrid plants, and then everything will be nice and scientific, just like you like it. Hmm. <laughs> Soon our berry will go into hibernation. Sometimes in the winter, when I'm feeling sad, I think bears are lucky sleeping without a care in the world. But if I'm happy and having a good time, then I feel sad for them. <laughs> but bears are really special because only they get to sleep all winter long. Not true. According to the latest scientific data, groundhogs and badgers also hibernate. Yeah. Yeah. As well as. Oh. You lose, Moose. Woo! <laughs> Oh, and many other animals as well, like, let's see here, turtles, chinchillas, and hedgehogs. <laughs> hedgehogs? Yes, hedgehogs. Uh -huh. Hedgehogs. <laughs> it's a good thing that you don't hibernate in the winter like other hedgehogs. Without you, I would die of boredom this winter. You're a special hedgehog, one that gets to sleep at night. <laughs> oh. Oh. And how could you have known that you need to hibernate every winter anyway? It's not like it's your fault. 
And besides, you gotta sleep when you wanna sleep, you know what I mean? And if you don't wanna sleep, then I say you got nothing to worry about. Don't you know what sleep deprivation can cause? Irritability, a lowered immune system, poor vision and health. And finally, mood swings. Can you possibly imagine for a second how much sleep I've lost all these years? Hm. Well, what should we do then, huh? Actually, there's nothing you really have to do. But if you want to sleep comfortably all winter long, then you just got to make sure that you're prepared. You need a feather bed, some pillows, and your blanket. Huh? And a kettle near your bed just in case you get thirsty. That's pretty much it. Lie down, tuck yourself in, make yourself comfortable, close your eyes, put a paw in your mouth, and sleep. He's asleep. Are you lying down? Yes. Check. Are you tucked in? Check. Have you gotten comfortable? Well... Kind of, but oh, mm. my back itches. Mm. Oh, oh, mm. oh, thanks. I'm now good now. close your eyes, put your paw in your mouth, and sleep. Sleeping? Hmm. So <laughs> sleepy, I'm not sleepy, not sleepy at all. Chico, if you want to speak to me, then take your paw out of your mouth, please. I was saying that I'm not able to fall asleep. Uh, do you think that you could maybe, uh, you know, sing me a little song? Something to help me fall asleep? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever sung a lullaby before. Pretty please. All right, all right. Sleep, Chico. My really good friend, Chico. Have the best and the sweetest dreams Though you have never slept all winter before I will be so alone, thinking only of you as you sleep <laughs> Sleep tight, and don't let the bed bugs bite <laughs> And when you wake up one day in the springtime Come visit your best friend's grave Who actually died this winter He died of boredom And he was all alone too I can't live without you <laughs> Chico, you sleeping? It turns out that not all... It turns out that not all hedgehogs are the kind that hibernate. I was reading up on it, and it says that some hedgehog species from the faraway jungles of Indochina are as active in the winter as they are in the summer. Huh? Of course, it's only a slim possibility that our Chico belongs to one of those species. Give me that. Let's check it out. <laughs> Chico, wake up! Just for a second. Chinese native. <laughs> Chico! Oh, Chico, I'm so happy! What? What's going on? Why is it all wet in here? Is it spring already? <sighs> Again? Oh, no. I don't understand. Why does this keep happening? Uh, just as I thought. 
But who keeps doing this to my crops? <laughs> hmm. According to this, it's super weird. <laughs> so these crop circles. <clears throat> Anyone you suspect? If I knew who to suspect, I'll tell you, I'd go and teach them a thing or two. Oh, no. <laughs> 20 feet long. I think it could be. Dinosaurs or some kind of insect that ate it all. Insects? Insects don't make designs. And also, insects are just too small. Or some kind of giant. Hmm. That must be it. Let's consider it. Hmm. Like an elephant. Whoa! Think about it! He stumbled on through here, and then felt so bad about it, he ran off. Unless you've made mm. some elephants mad recently. Mm. Mm. Oh. This isn't working. Let's take to the skies. I've known lots of elephants. They wouldn't do this. It was the wind! Just normal wind patterns. Nothing more. Yeah, let's go. Did you want Tess as a plane? Finn, have I ever let you down before? Don't make me answer that. Okay, my bad, but let's look at our new evidence. I now believe your crop circles were left by aliens. Seriously, they're like, gonna invade or something. So that's not great. Oh, why would they pick us? Oh, maybe they just want me. Huh. Sweet sauerkraut. Crash, I don't think aliens did this. Holy carrots, looks like Chico. We just want the true story, and tell us everything, now. Did you make aliens do this, huh? I ought to... Mm. Hang on. Chico, did you do this all by yourself? Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Chico, you can't stay quiet forever. I just wanted to reach out to someone in space. Mm. Okay. Mm. These aliens. How long have you and these evil aliens been in cahoots? And do you know when they'll invade us? I've never been in contact with any aliens. I'm little, and I always thought that no one could see me if they were looking from space. So I drew myself in the field, and just maybe someone can see it. But why would you need to be seen from space? I, I just thought that maybe it would be a good way to show the aliens what I looked like. Maybe they'd think we looked similar. You look like someone who's in trouble. Couldn't use paint, huh? That'd be too easy. Let's use Barry's crops instead. Space stuff. <laughs> so that's what you're uh, doing, huh? And I thought you could use a hand. I'm helpful, you know. <laughs> hmm. Space. Mm hmm. You know, maybe somewhere out there, other life form thingies really are looking for us. That would be super weird, but also kind of cool. Probably. Yeah, that would be so, so amazing. Sadly, we're too small to see. Maybe someone's looking down at us. Except there's nothing to see. Darkness. Hmm. Well, that's just depressing. Here is that confounded thing. I swear I was going to declutter this garage ages ago. Oh, yeah. Found it here. Hmm. 
Safe trail. Think pins going somewhere in space, maybe even to the moon. Why is that? It's his favorite robot, BB. It's been weeks. He hasn't reported back since he left. Pin thinks something's wrong with him. What's this? <laughs> what makes you think he's up there on the moon? Maybe he's somewhere close, and he'll be back Look soon. This. Look here! He sent me a photo! Hey, Pin! Is it <coughs> true that this thing can really fly? Pin, I'm coming with you. That's nonsense. No one's going anywhere. Darn it! How does this It's dangerous! <laughs> If Phoebe's up there, there's probably no reason to worry. He's not responding. Something has happened. Excuse me, it's only a one-man craft. Sorry, no passengers. Pin, you need to calm down. It's just nerves. He'll be back. Computer and launch confirmed launching. Here we go. Maximum weight exceeded. Maximum weight exceeded. Maximum weight exceeded. Maximum weight exceeded. So cool. No. Maximum weight exceeded. Crash! Maximum weight. What are you doing? Silly rabbit. They're too heavy to get to the moon. Maximum weight You're exceeded. You're probably right. I'm like Chico. Maximum weight exceeded. Spaceship fire. Oh no! Space, space, what have you both done? Fire. Your weight wasn't accounted for. Fire. We don't have the fuel to take us to the moon now. We don't have the fuel. <laughs> Maximum weight exceeded. Please jettison load. Maximum weight exceeded. Please jettison load. That's enough of it. Computer, end the alarm! <sighs> We've got to turn back. We should do a few orbits. Ho ho! Got it! Was that? Meteor! 
your shower. Do not open up that window. If you do, you will let all of the cold air come in. Well, just what kind of house is this anyway? It's actually only one room. And that room could use a good airing out. Well, you'll have to air it out another time then, like when I'm not here. Fresh air is not as important as my health is, in case you didn't know. But fresh air is really good for your health. It's so stuffy in here, you can't breathe. I can breathe, and I don't need your fresh air. Hey, you listen to me, mister. The least you could do is get out of my way. Seeing as I've agreed to help you clean up this pig pen, you should go out and take a walk. You just sit here like a bump on a log. You're doing this on purpose. You are trying to get me sick, aren't you? I mean, really sick. Well then. You are as healthy as an ox. All you need is some fresh air. Uh, mm, who are you to tell me what I can and cannot do in my house? <laughs> to help him from the bottom of my heart. It's all I wanted. I didn't mean anything by it. I had more important things I could have done. Fresh air is good for your health, isn't that right? He says, You're just trying to get me sick, aren't you? Oh, oh it was so terrible. Hm. If that's true, then his behavior is inexcusable. <laughs> Talking to you like that. Well, that is rude, to say the very least. <laughs> and to break his own window, shame on him. <laughs> Someone could have got hurt. But what should I do now? You wait until he realizes what he did and apologizes. Okay, but what if he doesn't? <laughs> that kind of behavior is simply unacceptable. Let me tell you a story. A long time ago, I too had a friend I cared about. Everything was wonderful, until he hurt my feelings. I kept thinking he would apologize, but he never did. What was I supposed to do? Just sit there and say, I don't care, keep hurting me as much as you want. No, I couldn't go on like that. I left and haven't seen him since. Rosa? If 
your friend hurt your feelings by accident. Maybe he didn't mean for that to happen, but it just turned out that way. If that were true, then he could have found out why I left. But it seems that he didn't really need my friendship after all. <sighs> because in the end, he didn't even bother to try. <sighs> oh, that is such a very sad story. You see, friends are unpredictable. My trunk, however, is different. I've had it my whole life, and it's never betrayed me, ever. <laughs> Rosa! <laughs> Rosa! Oh, this brings back some memories. Oh, it's so shiny. Oh, hey, I want that one. Make some room, kid. Oh, oh, oh. Now it's a party. Ah, oh, look at this hat. This was my favorite. The stories this hat could tell. What are all these magazines here? Huh? Some of the pages are falling out of them. Ah, I used to get those old things ages ago, but never had time to read them. <laughs> I thought I'd read them when I retire, but I never got around to it. <laughs> Look, a letter. What? It can't be. Darling, why haven't you answered my letters? I've sent you 30 already. With each one asking for your forgiveness... It's all my fault. Look, here are some more. <laughs> the post office probably stuck them in these magazines. You know, since they were all going to the same address. Anyway? I know, it's all my fault. Why did you have to leave? I can't stop thinking about you. I guess you don't want to have anything to do with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wally! Wally, Wally! Hey, what? What's the matter? I'm back. You can apologize now. It's quite a curious manuscript. Hmm. What's your opinion, Chico? <laughs> Looks like it could be a message from aliens. That's an interesting theory, but unfortunately wrong. What we have is a classic example of a treasure map. Are you sure? It doesn't look like a treasure map. Elementary, my dear Chico. It's encoded, but not a word to anyone. I think I found an encoded clue. Partially erased with a mysterious sign. So how are we supposed to decode it? We need to investigate! Let's go! All the non-coded treasures have already been discovered a long time ago. But we can be the first to find a coded one. Jump, run, jump, jump, run, jump, Look out, look out, look out. Jump, look out to the side. Daco, we need to use your archives. Well, of course. My library is always at your disposal. We don't need the disposal, just the library. What are you looking for? Maybe I can help. Now it's clear. This is not a map. This is a diagram. A diagram we need to use to assemble some kind of artifact. Most likely a monstrously powerful one. But isn't it dangerous? It might be 
A bomb. That would be a blast. But what's more likely is this artifact will show us everything we need to know to find ancient treasure. And all that's left to do is assemble all the parts. Ready? Test 126 doesn't work. Something's just not right. Hmm. It looks similar. Now. Nah. Holy carrots! Chico! We need to look for parts that have this symbol on it. I'll do some more decoding. Inventor A S. Popov. Popov? Chico! I know what we have to do now. We need to go to Carlin and learn more about the inventor Popov. Let's go! Alexander Stepanovich Popov was an outstanding inventor. He gave people the incredible opportunity to hear each other from long distances. You mean he was a warlock? More like a good magician. Mr. Popov invented a machine that works with magic waves of energy. Huh? And thanks to these rays, we can now transfer any information to any distance anywhere in the world. I get it now. The artifact will show us which way to go on the map. Well, I think that I have finally put it together. Last minute North Pole travel offer. A perfect vacation for the entire... Family. That must be the first clue. duty won't be done until I get to Megadon. When Alright, also known as Constantinople, uh, also known as Second Rome, which is also known as Istanbul. The film festival in India concluded with all the participants getting up to dance. So what does it mean? The treasure is in five cities? Crash, maybe we should connect all the cities on the map, just like what's on the diagram. Just like the diagram? Hmm. A clue. Aha! Chico, I'm a genius. We'll go here. above look down with gusto the road below won't let us fail straight ahead is where we must go the siberian trail if our legs don't turn to jelly if our brains don't turn to stone we will walk we will swim we will crawl to the city of Oz, to the city of Oz. From ginger ale, the Siberian Trail. If our legs don't 
turn to jelly. If our brains don't turn to stone, we will walk, we will swim, we will crawl to the city of Oz, to the city of Oz, to the city of Oz, to the city of Oz. To the city of Oms, to the city of Oms, 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 Oms. Tired, our backs are breaking, but believe me, we don't care. Cause we know the road we're taking leads to you nowhere. If our legs don't turn to jelly, if our brains don't turn to stone, we will walk, we will swim, we will crawl to the city of Oz, to the city of Oz. If our legs don't turn to jelly, if our brains don't turn to stone, we will walk, we will swim, we will crawl to the city of us, to the city of us. It's about time. We were starting to get worried. I can't believe that you guys took that long to figure out all our clues. What do you mean, your clues? Isn't this an ancient temple? With treasures in it? No, of course not. It's something much better. Let me welcome you to the Omsk Radio Factory. It was all a waste of time. It was a joke. Why did you blabber on about that magician Popoff and his magic waves? I wasn't blabbering. Popov invented the radio. Radius means ray or beam of light in Latin. And thanks to this invention right here, we can hear each other from great distances and transfer any information. So what is this thing, then? We thought we were putting together some sort of artifact. That's a diagram of a radio receiver. In some sense, it is indeed a magical artifact. I mean, think about it. With this mechanism, we can hear a sound that was sent from thousands of miles away. The truth is, you found something far more valuable than ancient treasures. You put together a radio receiver. You managed to break our secret codes. Then you found your way here. Which means you can consider yourselves true radio engineers and the successors of the great inventor, Popov. For your demonstration of intelligence and ability, we name you honorary radio engineers. Well done! Phenomenal! Bravo! Very well done! <laughs> I feel kind of sad, though. Just a tiny bit that there wasn't any treasure. Some things are way cooler than treasure. To the city of Oz! To the... It's spring! 
So many springs I've seen. But each one still feels like the first one. My blood is running so fast. My feelings are alive at last. Hmm? Those are my snowshoes. I bought them in... Now, where did I buy those again? In Greenland. There is so much snow there. Whoever named it Greenland was colorblind. And this hat. It was a gift. I got it in Mongolia or Angola. They say it doesn't allow any bad thoughts into your head. Although, sometimes it feels like it doesn't allow any thoughts in my head. Dalem, 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 dalem. Hey! Mm. Oh! Anyway, can you help me unpack my summer clothes? Does this need to be unpacked too? Very interesting. Hmm. I don't remember what's in this one. Let's find out. Open it up. It's locked. Is there a key? I don't know. I don't remember where this suitcase is from. <laughs> what if we open it up and then there's a fortune inside? Yeah, like buried treasure, except for the buried part. No, wait, there's no need to open it. I... Yeah, I gotta go. Hmm. Come in. I don't deserve your forgiveness. I must confess everything to you. You see, my conscience won't let me hide it. Inside this suitcase is... Cash. What? Little colored pieces of paper. You can use them to purchase all sorts of different things. Long ago, I was coming home from the theater and I spotted a suitcase full of money. I decided to keep it. I was ecstatic, but soon I felt ashamed because what I had was stolen. It wasn't mine, and I tried to forget about the suitcase, and now I found it once again. Don't worry, Carlin. Maybe the person that lost it didn't need the money in the first place. Yeah, maybe you just grabbed it by accident. You are absent-minded, like musicians everywhere. Oh, that's right. It isn't money in there. I remembered that I lost the suitcase with the money in it during my layover in Constantinople. In that case, what's in that case? My sweet violin. You mean you just found that violin? No, it's really my violin. But it makes no difference. I can't be forgiven anyway. Once I stayed with a tribe of natives and got them hooked on classical music. I played for them every day, and they just couldn't live without listening to sonatas, nocturnes, and elegies. But then I left them and took with me the music, notes, violin, and everything. I was young and stupid. How can I write this horrible wrong that I committed? <laughs> How terrible. <laughs> How come you never told us about this before? It's huh? hard when you get older to live with yourself, thinking about all the mistakes you made when you were younger. That's why you forget everything <laughs> bad and remember only the good. Very convenient, but sooner or later, it catches up. Don't worry. I'm sure the Maori have forgiven you. Uh, they probably listen to music on the radio. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I had given my violin to a radio station. So in that case, what's in there? Well, there could be anything in there. Like... The remnants of some cowardly act I committed. Or some betrayal I enacted. Or some offense that I caused. 
There might be traces of days gone by that my old heart, that is softened with the winds of time, just can't handle any longer. Mamma mia! This is my extra summer underwear. What has happened to my memory? I have a feeling that if you have a clear conscience, then you won't have problems remembering things. My young friend, it'd be good if by the time you're old, all the bad memories you want to forget fit into one suitcase. For some of us, even a boxcar on a train won't be enough. Please, come in. Come right in. Make yourself comfortable. Good to see you. <clears throat> My friends, today I would like to talk to you about nanotechnology. This is the technology that allows us to work with objects on an atomic level. <laughs> we all know that everything, from the smallest ant to the biggest mountain, is made of teeny tiny atoms, including us. Hey, I remember my Don't right look easy. for them. You'll never find them. <laughs> it's impossible to see atoms without a microscope. They are as small compared to the size of my hoof as my hoof is compared to the Earth. Wait, I see one. I see an atom. Oh, oh, it's a flea. Sorry. Moving right along. When we study the world of atoms, we unlock all kinds of phenomenal discoveries. You may find it hard to believe, but we can work with atoms directly. We can move them and rearrange them like building blocks. The applications of nanotechnology are simply astounding. Well, what are they saying? Darko is saying something about nano... Uh, nanotechnology. Darko needs a... Nanny? Nanotechnology. What Ooh. gives? They were supposed to show us a new rocket, but they're going on about some nanny technology instead? It sounds interesting. Why should I care about nanny technology? What good is it? They should just take us to the rocket and... <gasps> Pin's rocket ship! Wow, that's so cool! <laughs> Whoa, how fast does it go? <laughs> What's this do? Whoa, look at that! <laughs> Chico, climb up here! The hatch is open! Holy carrots! <laughs> Crash, don't push any buttons. You might start the rocket. Chico, you worry too much. There's no way I could accidentally start the rocket. <laughs> Pin knows to keep everything locked. He's way too smart to leave a live rocket here when I'm around. <laughs> Huh? <gasps> Ooh. And that is how nanotechnology will pave the way to a brighter future for us all. <laughs> <laughs> now Pin has promised to give us a tour of the brand new rocket ship he built. Tomorrow morning, Pin will be blasting off to... Huh? Sweet sauerkraut, I had a feeling Crash would do something like this. How could I forget to engage the child locks? They won't get very far. There's barely any fuel in the tank. Are they <gasps> going to crash? Oh, my. <laughs> Nine, the rocket will become space junk. It'll stay in orbit forever, 186 miles above the Earth. can see Earth through the window. Chump and jackrabbits, we're actually in space. Nah, that doesn't sound so bad. We could find another rocket and get them. Nine, by the time we build another rocket, it'll be too late. They only have enough oxygen for five hours. And then? They will stop breathing. 
Well, I can't. Calm down. Winter. It's beautiful. Hoppa! <laughs> the moon is so close. Let's go see if it's really made of cheese. Or better yet, let's go to Mars. How about we go back home? There has got to be a way to get them both back safely. <sighs> it's a good idea, son, but if they fire the thrusters in the wrong direction, they'll end up even farther away. Quiet! I think I found their frequency. Come on, you hunk of junk. I want to meet some Martians. Ground control to crash. Come in, crash. Crash speaking? You are in great danger. What? You're about to run they out of no fuel. fuel. And when that happens, huh? life support will what shut do you mean, down. Life and it won't be long uh... before you both suffocate. We're coming to get you. So hang tight and don't waste oxygen. What's he talking about? Suffocate? What does that mean? Do you know? It means we won't be able to breathe. We'll never go home or see our friends again. This one time, I almost lost my balloon. But then I grabbed the string and pulled it back. Maybe we could try that? Did you say string? Rosa, where in the world are we supposed to get 186 miles of balloon string? That's 982,080 feet! Any rope made of normal fibers would snap under the pressure. We need an all-new kind of rope. A rope that's very light and very strong. No rope like that exists. Then, then we'll, we'll invent, invent it. it. Then BB will attach it to the rocket and we'll bring our boys home. Pin's rocket ship. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> Whoa. Nine. Sweet sour coat. Come in, crash. Crash speaking. You are in great danger. What? You're about to run out of we fuel. No fuel. And when that happens, huh? life support will shut what down. Do and it support? won't be long before you both huh? suffocate. They only have enough oxygen for five hours. And then they will mm. stop breathing. Mm. <laughs> Calm down! We're coming to get you, so hang tight and don't waste oxygen! To invent a super rope, we'll have to find an analogy! A uh what? -huh. It's quite simple. We take inspiration from things that already exist. For instance, we can look at the structure of super strong objects that occur in nature and base our rope on that. Yeah! So the question becomes, what is the strongest material in the natural world? Let's see, there's spider silk, limpet teeth, and also diamond. <laughs> that will take a whole lot of diamonds. We're not making an actual diamond rope. We'll create something like a diamond rope. Hey, Pin, what was it that gave you the idea originally to invent your airplane? <laughs> Buddy! <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Birds are nothing like planes. <laughs> A plane doesn't flap its wings, right, guys? <laughs> ha ha. <sighs> the atoms in a diamond are arranged in the shape of a hexagon. That is what makes diamonds so very hard. That means we need to make our rope using hexagons. Hmm, yes, but the outside atoms only have two connections instead of three. That's the structure's weak point. Hexagons, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Could we roll them into a tube? Sure. Then we'll braid them. Actually, a braid would fix the issue. Let me show you. The weather's not looking good. Bibi can't fly in the rain. And if the rope gets wet, it'll get too heavy. I'm gonna give Bibi my umbrella. The rope has to be water resistant. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nearly waterproof. What if we paint it? Paint would make the rope even heavier than water. Hmm, true. You know, no matter how much it rains, the cabbages in my garden stay completely dry. No kidding. Cabbages? Think in analogies. 
Hmm. We'll just add water. Interesting. Little green bumps. <gasps> yes, that's it. Eureka! My friends, <clears throat> I've solved the mystery of the cabbage leaf. <clears throat> the entire exterior of the leaf is covered with microscopic bumps. They are bunched together so tightly that water can't spread out. Therefore, the cabbage can't absorb the water. And it simply rolls off as droplets. So, we wrap the entire rope in cabbage leaves? We'll just have our nanobots mimic the same pattern on the surface of our rope. Ha! Nanobots are great! <laughs> I am calm. Chico, help me get this thing open! So calm. I'm too cool to die out here! Mega calm. Let me out of here right now, you jerk! From up there among the stars, the Earth looks so tiny, like an atom. I'm just so glad that we're back home. Thanks, Nanny Technology. Yeah. Thank you, Innovation. Crash! Chico! 